Hi Sanam, so how are you in Norway? Hi sir, I am good. So good it's been a while in you. Norway. Yeah. yeah. So Sanam, uh, presently you are uh, pursuing your higher education in Norway, and uh, I want you to tell us first about uh, which university you are, and uh, Sanam, वहाँ पे कौन से कोर्स में you are enrolled in Norway? Okay. So sir, uh, I will start from scratch. Like uh, I applied one year ahead. Like I sta- I started my application in two thousand twenty one. and uh, approximately in september uh, and september december and um, then i got this uh, like offer from ostfold university college along with that i also like received other offers from different universities which are in arctic region of norway but uh, i preferred this one and i actually applied for uh, almost all the universities in norway like uh, since the application fees is zero and uh, th- this is like a centralized uh, counseling as we see in indian education system as well the ccmt process right mm-hmm. it's same as uh, ccmt you have to apply through the university is centralized so i am currently in uh, like masters in applied computer science program mm-hmm. which is uh, going to be integrated with the phd in future okay so this is integrated stuff i mean you will be doing getting masters and then you yes. will be enrolled into phd right so here it is like you have to prove like you are uh, i mean there is no such thing that is called as direct phd here but um, like when when they interview you you have to like ask what are the options to convert your masters into phd and uh, once you prove your proficiency and all these things you your guide will convert your masters into phd and it will hardly take 3 and 1/2 years or for max to max 4 years uh, as much as your funding goes uh, to complete your phd here okay so so i i will ask you uh, uh, first uh, sanam before i come back to you and what are the requirements uh, for ms program and all uh, you know i i read somewhere that the elections are going to come in norway in next 2 years government is going to change and the new government is uh, contesting on the uh, particular i think policy document in which they want uh, to you know uh what we enjoy now now presently that there will be a free yeah. education there is a free education for international students in norway that may end end if this government comes so i uh, somewhere i read it ke 2 saal ke baad shayad aisa ho jaye ke free education mm-hmm. ho so is this correct and uh, what is your view now you are there <laughs> yeah. sir it's like very good that you know you came up with this uh, particular idea like i mean this is important when it comes to you know asian south asian people because uh, we we actually target only germany for free education right we don't know like other countries but uh, it is like as you are getting free education in germany it is equivalent to get um, yourself educated um, like high, get uh, proficient with masters degree in um, not norway as well i mean there are pretty good university so uh, currently it's like you have to show uh, some amount in your bank and uh, that will be uh, you know like help you to prove that you are you will be able to survive for one year in norway but they are not asking fees tuition fees semester fees they are not asking the semester fees and all this but current scenario is like uh, government wants to you know amend this bill that uh, i mean they are uh, discussing these things in senate of course uh, like overnight they cannot pass a bill right they want they like the system is very transparent here and they cannot trans, um, like they cannot convert that bill overnight so things are proceeding in that direction that they may impose uh, tuition fees for international students here mm. and uh, this may happen in two, next two years or one year or maybe three years okay. but it may be the i mean it may happen that they may introduce tuition fees or semester fees so it is a high time that if student wants to join they should join exactly mm-hmm. exactly they should not only compete with um, compete with in, within germany but they should also consider norway because um, it's like of course everyone knows um, like high quality of life and other things right mm-hmm. like um, proper welfare and all these things so it is as good as getting jobs and especially for computer science people and uh, like in those who are in information technology hub information technology field they uh, they can enjoy you know very variety of uh, 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 career opportunities here they can go for phd they can go for jobs they can go for so that means know, job market is good sanya huh? after graduation yes. after master yes huh? yeah so even if uh, like any person you know get comes with mechanical background civil background and all these backgrounds petroleum engineering all these background they they focus on uh, it development okay. of all these uh, 
uh, all these domains hmm. acha sanam uh, i want to ask you what what do we understand by free education so students who will be watching this video please explain us what is the meaning of that free education okay so um, currently what uh, like the okay any student has to incur two charges right right like one is living expenses and another is education expenses okay so you just need to bother about living expenses which is roughly uh, roughly around 50 to 60000 indian rupees per month however uh, education is like uh, you don't need to pay anything for uh, your semester fees or anything like that it's just 7000 indian rupees you have to pay as uh, as your enrollment for uh, each semester and that is somewhat uh, pretty cheap i mean it is something anyone can afford i guess mm -hmm. uh, who is targeting uh, to you know uh, study abroad mm -hmm. along with that uh, they 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 call it as semester fees and tuition fees separately mm -hmm. and uh, they charge this 60 euros or 70 euros as a as a semester or as a tuition uh, sorry as a semester fees not as tuition fees because tuition fees is zero here yeah. okay so so uh, as indian students sanyam please tell us uh, how much is the running cost for this jaise uh, you are presently studying in norway in masters program so what is the expenditure running expenditure uh, you you are incurring presently sir you mean to ask uh, all the expenses including it's, my it's and... Currently, yeah so roughly around uh, if you are having 70000 indian rupees or 75000 indian rupees in pocket for one month you are you are good to go okay so that means uh, somewhere around at 8 to 10 lakh per annum expenditure right sir so that means right, for sir. two years 20 25 lakh will be incurred right yes sir that yes, includes sir. everything you are living and everything right 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 mm. and sir i have also heard that uh, when you apply for masters courses you need to show some money in your account exactly sir so they don't want to uh, key like um, you come here and you run out of your money right so they want you to be prepared sure for at least one year mm. yeah for at least one year mm. because uh, they expect that uh, you will come here and do some uh, jobs here as well mm. like uh, not uh, odd jobs but skilled jobs so it's easy to get skilled jobs once you are into the you know pipeline of uh, this, this education system so that i will ask you but tell me how much minimum money is required like suppose i decide today to go for ms in norway so how much money should i show in my account so it's around uh, 1 lakh 22 or 28000 norwegian currency that is uh, roughly equal to 12 lakh indian rupees okay. uh, though this conversion is uh, like fluctuating seven i mean indian rupees in nox is fluctuating uh, uh, you can check with uh, your bank but uh, roughly if you are having 12 lakh indian rupees you are safe so that from there uh, there only they will keep on uh, taking money every month right from this 12 lakh only no 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 this money will be uh, will be transferred to your account once you are in norway and uh, and then you can it's up to you like you if you want to keep that 12 lakh with you and pay pay your rent with your indian currency additional so that you know keep your this money safe or you can ask them to you know spend this money for uh, rent and all these oh, okay so so now suppose sanem i arranged 12 lakh rupees from my parents or something i arranged money right and i landed up in norway like the way you are now so can i earn next year's money uh, along with my masters i mean do i get opportunities to earn in norway also <laughs> yes sir uh, so it's it, i mean if you are like skilled and uh, you have uh, you know see everything is when it comes with your skill set i mean if you like you if you are skilled and you have capabilities to prove that you are uh, uh, like you are eligible for this position they will easily accept you so students here get a variety of offers once they are enrolled in their university you know no one will tell you like uh, these offers are available you will be once you are enrolled in the university you will be getting emails that uh, there is a position for teaching assistant there is a position for student assistant for this particular course for that particular course mm -hmm. there is a position called as lab assistant okay. simple lab assistant also you can become mm -hmm. so they have a, a very good pay i mean you can easily uh, you know you can easily that. save save some money and spend money on your living expenses you don't okay. need, even need to touch that uh, 12 lakh indian rupees that you have transferred to your account in norwegian account right mm -hmm. so that is how one can so that is that is within the university only you can get all this yes sir yes sir like yes once i mean 
people don't know about this once they are enrolled in the university then only they can uh, get this information from mm -hmm. different professors mm -hmm. so so that is sufficient to meet your expenditure and uh, that is you can exactly get. yeah and you are also using a term called skill uh, students are skilled so can you elaborate okay. on that? what do you mean by that skill yes sir so what do they check is like uh, let's say there is a subject called as software engineering and project management Okay. which is uh, taught in um, UGC curriculum, okay? Mm -hmm. And same way here also, they are having information systems and software engineering as a course. Okay. All over Norway, every university has this course. Okay. So I am picking particularly computer science course because I am from computer science background. Right. So right. they will, I mean, this is the course which has, which sees high number of uh, enrollments. Okay. So they need teaching assistance for this course. So once you are like, let's say you have enrolled in Oslo Metropolitan University, Mm. So a professor will ask, will seek, uh, will seek uh, teaching assistance from the university itself, like from the master student, mm. same as we have, we see in IIT, right? Mm. So you professor will send an email to all the students that are in master's curriculum, master's course. And uh, you just have to click yes, that yes, I want to be part of this. And mm. I have done this course or software engineering project management in my bachelor's. Okay. And uh, I have got, uh, let's say a minus or a grade in the course. So that makes me compatible with the teaching assistant position. So if you can, you know, prove this and you have to go with a 30 minutes of interview, then you are pretty easy to get okay. the opportunity. So the moment, the moment you land up there, these opportunities start popping up and you can, as per your uh, capability or skill, you can explore that, right? Uh, Sanem? Yes. So yes. Sanem, how many months uh, have been there now? You are uh, there in Norway for how many months now? Sir, it's been two months. Uh, two so pretty how's your months. experience? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's pretty good. I mean, like, uh, it's very, uh, like, see, Norway is uh, less populated. It's just 50 lakhs population. So there are uh, many opportunities uh, to explore. I mean, for, um, like, for jobs, for, uh, for education, for continuing your career. Mm. So, so, yeah, so higher education ke baad bhi opportunities pe hai. Yes, sir. Malab, if somebody, somebody invests that much of money there, he or she can get good jobs there, right? Yes, uh, sir. Thing is, sir, in countries like uh, different countries, you actually invest your money to the education. Like you have to pay money for your education that you're getting. Here you are investing on yourself. I mean, you are paying the rent on yourself. You are paying for food. You are paying for your so your personal expenses, right? Mm -hmm. They're not asking for uh, investing. The government in is not taking any money from you. It is only... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Understood. So, ये तो जैसे भी इंडिया में भी मतलब फीस वगैरह बढ़ गया है आईटीस का बढ़ गया है तो फीस इज मोर एंड ऑल बट नॉर्वे में वो नहीं है तो यू राइटली सेड के दैट एंटायर थिंग इज लाइक यू वर टेलिंग मी दैट द रेंट इज वेरी हाई लाइक 50000 इंडियन करेंसी में तो रेंट होगा सो दैट पर्टिकुलर पार्ट इज अ सिग्निफिकेंट पार्ट ऑफ आई थिंक दिस थिंग द रेस्ट इज ओके यस यस आई मीन इट इज लाइक अ इफ यू वांट टू स्टे इन सिंगल अपार्टमेंट देन इट इज लाइक इट वेरीज फ्रॉम डिफरेंट रेंजेस but uh, like uh, if you want to be in 11 shared do dormitory or if you mm -hmm. want to be i mean there are different options yeah mm -hmm. okay sanam no i i want to ask you uh, about the cre credentials of a student like someone who is listening to us and he decides that i want to go to norway for higher education let's say ms so what how he can make his assessment whether he can join or not so what do you think? I mean, क्या क्या parameters होना चाहिए? जैसे हम बोलते हैं ना IIT में जाने के लिए सब तुम्हारे पास इतना CGPA चाहिए, इतना grade score चाहिए and also Norway universities में जाने के लिए MS के लिए what is required? So sir, uh, like if you have completed a bachelor's, I mean first thing is you have to be complete, com like you have to complete your bachelor's. That's it. You you can be in your final year or you you, you can be ha having your degree with you as a uh, as your uh, bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. Along with that, you should have at least seven seven CGPA. Seven mm -hmm. CGPA is the minimum. Like uh, if you are having seven plus CGPA, you are safe. But mm -hmm. um, like let's say if you have six point five CGPA, but you have a pretty good experience of three four years, that will compensate your uh, CGPA. Okay. Along with that, uh, uh, along with the CGPA, let's say you are have. I mean, I'm taking a ideal uh, ideal mm -hmm. situation. Let's say you are having a C seven CGPA with a two years of experience in uh, let's say. Uh, like any mediocre company, let's say you are uh, just a system engineer in TCS or maybe any other company, which is mass recruitment in India mm -hmm. and you're part of it. And uh, you go, you, you have experience of two years, you have experience of seven CGP, you have uh, seven CGP with a better degree. It's fine. 
you you are good as good as uh, any other candidate mm. and uh, you can apply for almost every university in the norway yeah okay so, so uh, any competitive exam program. like ielts tofl or gre yes sir ielts with uh, they actually prefer students with 7 plus ielts band mm. but uh, 6 is the bare minimum 6.5 is the bare minimum i guess mm. okay but sir ielts. ielts is required yes sir ielts is required GRE it's is not, not like you can prove yeah I mean, TOEFL can also be uh, taken, but it's not like your B.Tech degree is in, in English medium of instruction. You cannot prove your English proficiency here. Mm -hmm. It is considered in Germany, and though, yeah. No, Sanam. Let me ask this question on behalf of those students who are doing their graduation, maybe in computer science or IT from a very very ordinary college. When I'm saying very ordinary, means very ordinary, right? Mm, uh, yes. So he is having CGP as you said, seven CGP plus one achieve seven point five, or IELTS nika. अब उसके पास मिनिमम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी होना चाहिए बारह लाख राइट दैट इज व्हाट यू सेड टेन टू ट्वेल्व लाख ही शुड हैव या व्हाट एल्स इज रिक्वायर्ड सो दैट ही कैन यू नो थिंक ऑफ यू नो ही कैन ड्रीम ऑफ गेटिंग इनटू नॉर्वे सर दैट इज ऑल आई मीन uh i am assuming that uh, passport is there <laughs> no no those things will come uske liye to usko fight nahi karna hai na lekin 10 lakh yes, exactly. usko rakhna padega ielts usko yeah. rakhna padega aur cgp usko lana padega exactly sir to agar ye teen cheez uske paas hai what i wanted to ask was ki koi college ka bahut naam nahi chahiye uh, usko aisa kuch bhi nahi chahiye to he should start applying right yes sir yes sir hmm. to how they differentiate ki kaun si university kis bacche ko deni hai usko differentiation kaise karte hain wo log ओके सर यहाँ पे मतलब जो सेंट्रलाइज्ड काउंसलिंग रहता है वो हर एक मतलब सेंट्रलाइज्ड एज इन पोर्टल सेम है बट इंडिविजुअल एप्लीकेशंस जाती है मतलब यूनिवर्सिटीज के पास इट्स नॉट लाइक कि एक सेंट्रल uh, अथॉरिटी है जो आपको असाइन uh, करेगा यू अप्लाई टू ऑल दोज यूनिवर्सिटीज यू गेट यू मे इट मे बी द केस दैट यू गेट ऑफर फ्रॉम ऑल दोज यूनिवर्सिटीज Okay. and it may be the case that you get offer from only one university okay. so it's like that and it's up to you that which university you want to go hmm. so wo differentiate aapke credentials aur kya check karte hain wo log like some some sir, students very good university some may not get very good university in norway exactly sir so they take a 30 minute 15 minute introduction interview in which you so have to you know hai. yes sir interview hota hai okay and interview is very easy i mean you just have to be little technical little um, little that is something which is related to hr kind of thing i mean you you can speak in technical terms you can speak in uh, good uh, good uh, proficient in english terms as well mm -hmm. so that's fine okay okay so sanam anything else you want to tell the students who are aspiring to be in norway anything else sir one thing is uh, which uh, you know i want to tell everyone is like um, they should if, if they are you know targeting norwegian university or maybe any scandinavian university at least try one year before so that you get ample time to you know get your visa process done get your uh, fund funding done all these things take time mm. it's it should not be the case that uh, you have received offer but you are not able to go right okay. because visa process takes time okay okay so you should start this entire process early yeah in time yes mm. chalo that is wonderful uh, uh, sanam so i wanted to yeah. check with you since you have gone there for the last 2 3 months So I will yeah. interact with you to get this information, and I will keep on popping again and again, Sanjay, to keep on getting more yes, information from you. Yes, and, uh, I'm very sure these, what you have told me, these students will benefit very much. They will be able to get their results. Because ten, ten yes, lakh, no, even I tell you, I think Hyderabad self-sponsored program is costlier than this. Exactly, sir. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As you remember, in the summer we were mentoring students. Right, yes. Hyderabad also it was costing ten to fifteen lakh rupees. <laughs> yes, sir. So if computer and IT guys are there, and if they want to have uh, uh, this thing, then it can be even wonderful. Yes, sir. So that can yes. be great. Chalo, Sanam, thanks a lot for your time. And again, I'll yes, catch sir. up with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. It was nice.